is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto Shalom. In this session, we're going to speak about Shabbat. We come to the conclusion of the festivals. Do we have to keep the festivals? And Gerrit, will you please, in this session, speak about Shabbat and tell us more about Shabbat? Well, let me just first say, we're not going to speak about Shabbat as, you know, oh, what is Shabbat all no, about no. and all of that. I but think, let's Shabbat just see it. Fits. Well, yeah, how With it the festivals. Fits. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, that's all, because it is such a vast subject. I mean, we can keep ourselves busy just with this one subject for 10, 15 years, um, having two broadcasts a week on just Shabbat. I think we, we need to just clarify where we are standing now. We said, or we asked the question, we asked, should we keep the festivals? I then started out by saying the real question is not whether we should keep the festivals. Mm. We're all keeping the festivals. In one way or another yeah, way. Yeah, in one or another way. Some people are keeping some of it, some of it in a very limited way or in a very extensive way or according to their own understanding. But what is important is that we do understand that there is a direct relationship between the word Shabbat or the concept of Shabbat and the festivals. Now, you know, the Bible says that God created the heavens and the earth. On the fourth day, he put the sun and the moon and the stars in place, which would then give us seasons. And this word seasons is the word muadim, which means festivals or the word where we get the word festivals from. So God put all of that in place so that there could be fruitfulness. And so the, the whole idea of the festivals is that it's about harvesting fruit. We start at Passover to harvest the seed. We finish the seed harvest at Shavuot or at Pentecost, and then we start with the fruit harvest. We then continue on until Sukkot, or Feast of Tabernacles, where we conclude the fruit harvest. So where does Shabbat fit in with all of this? Now, whenever you read about the festivals, you will always see that the word Shabbat comes up. Because all the festivals start with a Shabbat, and it ends with a Shabbat, or it is just a Shabbat. All seven of the annual festivals which God instructed the people to keep is directly connected to a Shabbat. But what is the essence of a Shabbat? What is the essence of the word Shabbat? And so the first one in the Bible that we see that kept Shabbat was the Father in heaven himself. Uh, in Genesis chapter 2 verse 1 it says that God created the heavens and the earth in six days and then he completed it on the seventh day with rest. So that word that is used there, that word rest, is actually the word Shabbat. It should actually be in translated. And so God concluded it with Shabbat, with rest. Now, whenever you finish your work and you want fruit to come from it, you need to come to a place where you stop. In other words, where you can say, I've now manufactured this thing, I'm finished with it, I rest in it, I sell it. I get my fruit. I work, I get to the end of the work, I celebrate, I've got a salary. So, you know, we've got our salary, let's go and have a nice meal. That's like a celebration. It's almost like I'm saying, I come to a rest. And so, the essence of Shabbat is that it's rest. And it's about concluding that which I've been doing. We've now planted the seed. We've worked the ground. We've planted the seed. It's grown. We've pruned the trees. We've tended to everything. It's grown. It's come to full fruition. We harvest the fruit. And then 
We have a festival mm -hmm. because of that. And that's what all the festivals are all about. Underlying, it's about the harvest seasons and about feasting. And then God says, I don't want you to work on that day. You've now worked. You've gathered in the harvest. Come on, take a rest. Take a rest. Have a feast. And that's what it is. Now, because of our religious understanding and how people have been brought up religiously, we want to make Shabbat something religious. Shabbat is not a religious thing. Shabbat is rest. Shabbat is actually God saying, enjoy the fruit of your labor. The Bible says it's a blessing if somebody doesn't just work, but he can also enjoy the fruit of his labor. And that's rest. So I work for six days, then God says, okay, take a break. Rest. So now we want to change and we want to make this, this day where we have all these religious activities. And I don't think that that's what it is about. It's a day of not doing your normal work. You know, I, I remember we were confronted with this idea. People asked us, why is it that um, Juan, our eldest son, would play rugby on a Shabbat for Jerusalem? He was playing for the Jerusalem Lions here. And we really had a big problem about this because people said, isn't this wrong? And I remember we went to our rabbi and we said to him, look, this is what's happening. John's playing rugby. And um, I remember he asked us this question. He said, is that his profession? We said, no. He just does it for his leisure time. He says, well, if he's not getting paid for it, then it's not professional work. Then there's nothing wrong with it. He says, the only thing that I can't think is why 31 grown-up grown men would run after one ball you know, fighting about it. Give them each a ball, they would all be happy. <laughs> well, that was his, his perception about it. But he then said, go and have a look. Look at what the instructions are. The instructions is, do not do professional work on that day. Do not do that which you normally get your money from. Why? Why don't we have to do that? Because what God is saying is, I want you to take a break. I want you to just get to the place where you also rest. Because rest is in essence the completion of what we've done. And we also complete our faith with resting. So the process of faith is, I hear what the Father is saying to me. I see this because I meditate upon it. I confess it with my mouth. I order my life according to it. And then I trust God that he is able to perform that which he's done. That means rest. So when I rest in the natural, from my natural work, that which I normally get my fruit of, and I just enjoy it, I'm actually training myself to say, this is how I will walk in faith before the Father. To complete my faith, I need to learn how to enter His rest. And so that's what Hebrews chapter 3 and 4 is speaking about. Where it says, today when you hear my voice, don't harden your heart. And then chapter 4 says, there is only this rest that's left for us. This Shabbat rest that is left for us. There is this thing to know that what Yeshua has done on the cross is a complete work. And I need to rest in that, that he is able to perform that which he has done. You know, I always look at, at Abraham. Abraham, 99 years old. Sarah, 89 years old. It's now 24 years since they got the promise. And it's only when he entered the rest it's when the father changed his words and he didn't say Sarai but Sarah. And she didn't say Abram but Abraham. Abraham, father of a, of a multitude. When that started coming out of her mouth, 
and something clicked. That's what Father can do. Then Isaac was born. Mm, one year. Within one year. Yes. Yeah, from where their names were changed until Isaac was born. 24 years, nothing. Because they did not enter the rest yet. But then they did. And when they entered that rest, the promise came. Mm. And we need to train ourselves. You know, it's a, it's a very difficult thing when I say to people, just enter the rest. You know, somebody's trusting the father for a child, trusting the father for finances, trusting the father for healing, trusting the father for a change in, in, in his business. A husband or a wife. A husband, a wife, yeah. whatever. And people strive. They strive this because they want it so strongly. And then we can say, oh, you just need to enter the rest. And how do you do that? How do you enter rest? Well, here is a way of experiencing it in the natural. Mm. You know, when, when I have a table that's filled with food and I eat it, then I can say, I understand what it is to sit at a table that's set before me. And that's actually what David is speaking about yes. in Psalm 23. He's speaking about the Shabbat festival or one of the festivals where he says there's a table set before him. His cup runs over. There's a cup at every festival table. He says, my cup is running over. There's this little plate at the bottom because you have to pour it until it runs over. So he's actually referring to that in Psalm 23. He says, my cup runs over. He says, only goodness will follow me all the days of my life. When? When I enter his rest. But we don't know. We struggle with this. To enter the rest in the natural. And so God says, here is something to practice. How to enter his rest. Come on. Stop working. Stop doing your professional work. It doesn't mean that I now have to sit down and I have to be just in my little corner and not move. No. It's a time of festivity. That's why we started with a festival meal. But when I do that, I just say, wow, it's a time of taking time of that which I'm doing from which I get my natural fruit. Because I've now received the fruit and I can now walk in that to rest in the Father. So it becomes a natural exercise for that which is a spiritual thing that I have to do to enter his rest. And all of the festivals are then connected to this, where God says, come on, you've received some fruit now. Rest. Come on. Enjoy the fact that I have blessed you. You know, I think one of the biggest problems with the festivals and why people have problems with it is because we look at it religiously. We don't look at it from a relationship. If I have a relationship with the Father, then that relationship will bear fruit. And then it will bring me to a place of rest. And then it's not about a day that I'm keeping. It's about an exercise in my spirit. An exercise of resting in God that gives me this understanding that God has the, has the ability to do that which he's, he's promised. Does that mean that I can keep it on any day of the week? Well, I don't see that anywhere in the Bible that they've done it on different days. And there is an idea now that is floating out there that says every time there's a new month, then the cycle of seven days starts over. And that's exactly what the guys at Qumran, the community that was down there, believed in. They were called the children of the light. And that's what Yeshua spoke about when he says that the children of this world is even more wise than them. Because they didn't act according to a biblical cycle of it. They had their own cycle, which started every time at um, the beginning of a new moon, where they would start counting, and then they would have their Shabbat on different days. And Yeshua was actually condemning that. And so I say, if he condemned it, then I'm not going to go for it. But it's a cycle that God's put in place from the beginning. Shabbat is not something that is a law that was given when Moses was on the mountain. No, Shabbat is something that God himself did. He rested to complete his work. And so when I live this lifestyle 
of Shabbat, then I'm saying I'm going to rest in God's ability that the promises that He's given me, which I have now set, which I have now seen, which I have now done, I will be prosperous. Joshua 1 verse 8. These, this book of the instructions shall not depart out of my mouth, but I shall meditate upon it day and night, that I might observe to do according to it, for then I will be prosperous in what I'm doing. Then I will have fruit. Shabbat is a celebration of fruit, but it's also a prophetic act of saying, I will be fruitful, and God is able to do that which He has promised. Hallelujah. Well, enter your rest and see how God is coming and fulfill the desires of your heart. We want to thank you that you have joined us for this broadcast. If you have a question that you want us to answer, please write to scripture says at hebrewpeople.com and we will discuss it. We send notifications of future broadcasts to those who have subscribed. To subscribe, please add the name and number that you see on the screen to your contacts on your phone and let us know that you have done it by sending a WhatsApp message to the number on the screen with your name, email address, country and city you are from. Please also share this with your friends. We want to thank you for your prayers and financial support. The seed that you are sowing make it possible for us to continue. If you want to donate towards these broadcasts, please write to scripture says at hebrewpeople.com and we will send you the banking details for your continent. You can also donate via PayPal with the details that are on the screen. Thank you once again for joining us at What the Scripture Says About. We are looking forward to spending time with you again. Music